The Gauteng Education MEC Matume Chilwane says that they will be adding additional security guards to Oakdale Secondary School in Ernedale, south of Johannesburg. It follows the death of a grade 8 learner yesterday. The 14-year-old learner was stabbed to death outside of the school filing an alleged altercation with another learner. A grade 10 learner has also been injured during the incident and is currently in hospital. Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the incident. So, Gauteng Education MEC Matume Chilwane joins us now to update us further. A very good afternoon to you. MEC and thanks for your time in the ACBC at the summer. Well, thank you so much. Good afternoon to you and good afternoon to your viewers. In lieu of this news that um, is coming through, we're looking at some of the updates um, since yesterday. You visited the school. Perhaps you could also talk to us about what you unearthed and what are some of the interventions that you've put in place this far? Well, thank you so much uh, once more. First, inter firstly, obviously, the challenges of Oakdale are it seems, it's, it's, it's nothing new in the sense of uh, most of the time the schools that are, are closer to communities where there's a lot of gangsterism, you find out gangsterism in school. If the, the safety, the crime levels are high, you will most probably find the same challenges in the school. So what we've done now, we, besides beyond the beefing up of security, we have additional, added an additional component that now our schools at night will, we are going to get canines, uh, dogs to assist us in the guarding of the schooling infrastructure. Uh, as you know, dogs have been found very effective uh, in alerting, firstly to alert us quicker if there's an intruder. But during the day, of course, we will not have them in case they decide to hurt one of our children. So, 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 so that's what we'll be doing. And secondly, we will be beefing up our school safety strategy that, that centered around a collaborative work with communities. So the local community, I met some of the local community leaders, including the councillor, who has committed to protect the school uh, in the morning and during the day, 24-7 with the community. They are going to be at the school every morning to ensure that even when we do search and seizures, they are present. But also we've brought in our audience as provincial government and also spoke to the local SAPs. We're going to intensify security in the school okay. because we suspect that obviously there's a bit of gangsterism as well. So let me see on the back of that, how are you going to also deal with the learners involved in the incident? Uh, just given their age and, and in terms of rehabilitation of sorts, if that is possible, what recourse exists on that front? Look, firstly, remember this is a homicide case. So we've given the, pol the police a, a space to do their work. But on our side, uh, uh, the commitment is that I'm making to the people of Houting every time is that I will always secure our children within the schooling per parameters. And that's what we are going to do. Uh, they're giving the age of those learners. And today as well, we picked up that there were about 15 or 16 learners that were arrested on their way to the school carrying different weapons, pangas, machetes, and knives. They were arrested by the local police based on our intelligence working with the community because uh, there's a suspicion of it's a gangster, uh, gangsterism. So that on its own, you know, showed us that obviously we need to not to, uh, pull our punches in, with regard to defending our learners in school. Mm. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing. Yes, yeah. Okay, because you spoke about intensifying security and also just having local community involvement and following the incidents of high stabbing. I mean, Oakdale or we were in that area, not new to incidences of violence, even the issue of gangs gangsterism in and around the schools. There was a, as a province, you launched a school safety program. Talk to us about some of the gains from that program to date as well, given some of the other interventions you've put in place. Uh, firstly, I need to highlight that Oakdale was not one of the schools that we sent security. It's the first time we dispatched yes. the security to the school. But the schools that we have sent security to, we've been receiving great uh, reviews from the school governing body, the principals and the parents. For instance, there was a school, Esteras, had had similar challenges for the longest of time. Mm -hmm. The learners, they have come forward to their parents that I feel safer now at school because now the bullying has gone down. Because we've got security, the, 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 the everyday searches, uh, the probability of having dangerous weapons in school has also gone down. So those are some of the things. But key to our strategy, uh, I have to say, is the community. Community 
parents, because these kids carry knives. These knives come from home. If you realize that your child is taking a knife, first thing I appeal to parents, call the school first. A knife is missing and I suspect my child took it. That's, that's, that's where we need. So the parents, the community need to help us, especially parents. So let me see, as, you, as you're urging parents and community involvement to intensifying that call, if we're just looking at the high-risk areas or even the high-risk schools at this point, are you able to divulge what, what's been identified on that front? Uh, we have identified over 235, 45 rather schools in high-risk areas. And, and, and all of them have got similar patterns. Gangsterism is high in those areas. Uh, uh, crime levels, of course, they exist. So those are the schools that, but these are not high risk schools. These are schools in high risk areas mm. in terms of crime. That's where we find them. So we know them. Uh, because of obviously minimum resource, we could not display security to all of them at once. So what we did, we had to gauge them in terms of the levels of risk uh, in those schools. Mm. Uh, but the call for parents, I'm um, the call for parents is actually working. There's a school called Azar in the same area as Ogden, which an area we call Deep South. The parents today went to that school because during the week there was a similar incident of stabbing. Parents went to that school, ensured security, and they searched and they found learners. Some of the Can learners were carrying this. The, uh, oh, the yeah. camera is not framed properly. We can't see your face. There we go. Please continue with your point as oh, you yes, oh. as you continue. Thank you. Oh, sorry. No, I apologize. I'm carrying my phone. Yes, I'm saying that why I keep on calling for parents' intervention is because I've seen the success of this intervention. The strategy is parents, is community. As ourselves in school, teachers are supposed to teach. But the minute they, they, they move out of teaching, it becomes very difficult because they're not trained and it becomes an issue of discipline. And discipline can only be taught at home. At schools, we can't teach you discipline. We need to teach you how to read and write and comprehend and obviously model you to become a good citizen based on the values that we'll be teaching you at the school. But now we find ourselves dealing with more disciplinary matters than actually the teaching and learning uh, aspect mm -hmm. of it. So parents need to come. And that's where I always insist we need parents to play their part in this process. That's what we need. Parents must come. They must not just hand over their kids to us and leave it at that. It becomes very difficult, and these kids become very ill-disciplined, uh, I need to be honest with you, uh, in the process. But now we've also got a, a bullying. we we'll set up bullying boxes in school so that learners can anonymously identify people who are really making their lives difficult in school so that we can take those learners and then put them through a restorative process before we bring them back into the mainstream schooling system as well. Let me see, whilst I have you, I just want to wrap up quickly in the interest of time. Another issue came to the fore. We saw in the news recently an issue of an um, edible goods in schools this week. A grade one uh, pupil died after consuming snacks purchased from a tech shop in Brackpun. Several uh, children also fell ill or died last year under similar circumstances. Just very quickly, how do we begin to address this issue as well as we wrap? Yeah, no, that's another issue. Uh, uh, which I agree with you that it's a big issue now. I'll bring it back again to, to, to where the problem, where people who must take it, the parents, you know, we've seen and we've always sensitized that some of these puzzle shops are a problem. Our kids are buying from these puzzle shops uh, and, and we need to alert parents. Clearly, you can see that these puzzle shops are selling rotten things and these things are killing our children. Stop stop buying from these shops and make sure where you go, go to a, 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 what do you call this, a franchise or a supermarket that you know that we can be able to hold them accountable. But because as government, we are unable to hold a spaza shop accountable, but you can hold a, a shop right checkers accountable. You know, it becomes very difficult. So they need to work with us. They need to protect their children enough and, and, and sensitize that these, these shops these puzzle shops are selling unconsumable products and these products are killing our children. Uh, so, but we are also teaching the kids, we've told schools that teach the kids to be wary and avoid buying in areas where, in shops where they, 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 they look, they're quite suspicious as well.